What is up and welcome to another Halloween month edition of Worth Watch with me, Anthony Flores. This is going to be my quick overview for the original, and technically part one, the movie Scream. And I will be reviewing the subs subsequent sequels as well, so stay tuned for those. I'm trying to separate everything because it would just be like a fucking two hour video. Hell, I'm going to be trying to make this short. Uh as short as I can, because it's very hard to make a video not too lengthy when you enjoy a movie so much, and it's just, I'm going to go with the flow, relax, and you get you, you relax as well, just get some popcorn, watch all these videos if you'd like, all my Halloween month reviews, just sit back and relax, I'm going to do my best too here, grab your Count Chocula and, um, and just enjoy my thoughts on the original Scream movie. So, um, going back to uh, just the 90s, a time where slasher genre uh, films were just kind of dead in the water. They were just non-existent. They weren't really around much anymore since the 80s came and went. But then this movie redefined that. It paved the way for movies that just... Holy shit. Um, it just paved the way for various horror films to be in a very big way. And that is through self-referential humor, known as meta-humor, for those of you who know what that is. And anyways, it's pretty obvious what that is, because it's basically parodies, but you know it's a parody, and it's more like one of those Dr. Phil moments where you're just like, you know that you knew that that guy over there knew and such. I don't even know why the hell I went there. Um, <laughs> it's a fucking tangent, I swear. Um... It's just, I don't know what else to say in terms of a non-spoiler review. All I can say is, I guess that's why I'm struggling with the with these particular videos, because I enjoy all of them very much, with the exception of three. <sighs> to recommend to someone who's never seen these movies, all I can say is, if you enjoy a whodunit movie, interspliced with self-referential humor, great acting from the main actors involved that were seen throughout basically the entire series, um, Neve Campbell, David Arquette, and Courtney Cox were the three main actors that really stood out and stayed within the entire four films, and you enjoy seeing them kick some ass, fight back, and just survive by the end of the films, because the killer of Ghostface, which is the not literal name of the character, because it's always a different killer within each movie, as I said, a whodunit scenario. You will enjoy these movies. If you don't like that, and if you don't enjoy that formula, especially with the self-referential humor intact, you're going to hate these movies. And for those of you who have seen them, grew up with them like myself, I never watched them in their entirety until literally like eight years ago, but I grew up with them because I did watch them with my dad bits and pieces. I was a scaredy cat as a kid. I just watched a little bit, and I was trying to close my eyes, but I just remember telling my dad, Dad, I can't watch it no more. I don't like it. It's scary me. And then I would go upstairs. And my dad would, was a big horror movie guy, and um, that's the only reason why I even knew these movies existed back in the 90s. And over time, when I grew older and I realized, you know what? Some of these movies ain't so bad. And these movies, I can watch year-round. They're just a fun... Uh, just fun movies to see. And the original, while it definitely is the more disturbing and creepier and all around more suspenseful of the four, and definitely the, you know, since it's the original, it's the better one by many people's standards, but to me, yeah, that rings true. It really does. It's very much disturbing when the, uh, again, spoilers all around, just a warning, so um, I will always give my quick synopsis in the beginning of these videos for those of you who have yet to see either one of these, but for this plot, it's, as I said, a whodunit, as well as just the backstory that's given for the character of Sidney Prescott, played by Neve Campbell, is just genius. It's a girl who's traumatized due to the fact that her mother was murdered for being basically a promiscuous whore. And that she has to admit that to herself by the end of this film. She also has to deal with the fact that she put away a man unjustly when she thought it was he was the killer. She has to deal with the fact that a killer's trying to finish what he started the year prior to where this movie began. And by the end of the movie, you figure out it hits her fucked up boyfriend and her friend, played by um, 
Skeet Ulrich, and Matthew Lillard. That, to me, is just fucking insane. And the fact that self-referential humor plays within those ideas, very serious-toned ideas, where it's very tragic, and you see Neve Campbell giving it her all, man, just really pushing that character, making her believable, and it just feeling for her and just saying, that fucking sucks. And her friends trying to come to her aid, but then they end up either getting killed or they end up getting survived, but at the same time, you know, they, they survive with her, but there's just traumatizing all around. And holy shit, there is just a lot to this movie that is definitely more than just a teen slasher with meta humor. It's more than that. And that's what I think I love so much about this movie. Because what movie brings up post-traumatic stress? That is such a serious situation that could happen with someone who loses a family member because of murder. That's that's hard enough to deal with, you know, in real life. But for them to actually bring some of that grounded reality down back to here in the film, it's kind of heartbreaking to see her character go through all this trauma because of her fucking asshole boyfriend and her friend losing their shit because they're fucking crazy. And that's unfortunate as well. But they sell it, like Skeet Ulrich and Matthew Lillard, you know, they did a great job portraying these very psychotic young kids that just don't know what the fuck they're doing. And David Arquette, Courtney Cox, brilliant chemistry. They obviously had a relationship outside of the movies and had a family and whatnot. They were very, very good for this initial film right here. Um, overall, I very much enjoyed their chemistry on screen. And Jamie Kennedy hands down his legacy with these movies right here. It's unfortunate what happens to him in the sequel, but I like his character a lot. Being the movie nerd, I can relate to that character. It's awesome. And his explanation of the rules of horror films is fucking awesome. Every scene he's in, explaining, explaining. Yeah, that almost could seem a cop-out when it comes to writing. Just a character that says exposition. But it's so cleverly done that who gives a shit? Even if that's just his entire identity, but at the same time, he has a complex of wanting to get the girl. And I think that's what makes him just a little bit more relatable, and that's all it took for him, for you to give a shit for him, and hopefully that he'll survive by the, by the end. So there is so much to like about the original Scream, especially some of the more haunting imagery, or gross-out goriness, bloodiness, and whatever, the suspense, the humor... The meta humor, however you want to look at it, the acting and the direction and writing are all superb. And I highly recommend this movie for Halloween time or all year round. Have a good scare with your friends if you're really scared about movies like this, because I know I was. So I highly recommend it. And it's one of my favorite horror slash slasher thriller movies of all time. So thank you so much for watching my thoughts on the original Scream movie. Stay tuned for the other three videos coming very soon, or if not, they're up right now. And check out my other Halloween month videos as well. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Anthony Flotus with Worth a Watch. And keep going to the movies. And what's your favorite scary movie?